Hello and you're all very welcome along to another episode of the Gaelic Statsman podcast and it is championship time. Uh, the championship is coming up this weekend. Most people don't realise it because of how rushed probably the season is. But uh, yeah, the championship is starting this weekend with the Ulster Championship Games. Of course, uh, Cavan against Monaghan, which should be an, an entertaining encounter. You have the Connor Championship as well, the Leinster Championship and the Munster Championship. And also there's the Alliance Hurling League final and the LGFA finals at the weekend as well. So action-packed weekend. I'm delighted to be joined by John McMahon from the JMAC podcast to discuss this weekend's game. So, uh, John, being a pro Cavan man yourself, a weekend to start the championship involving your own county against the fiercest arrivals of Monaghan. So, uh, what a way to start. Hi, Matthew. Good to be on the show again and I uh, really look forward to chatting to you today. Um, and it's, uh, it's it's great to be on again. You do sterling work and um, I heard it on the other day, you were, you were mentioned on the RTE podcast, I think it was a Jackie Hurley or some of the big dogs mentioned it. So fair play, the work you're being, the work you're doing is definitely being credited. And I uh, don't know that you spot that, I must send it on to you if you watch the RTE GA podcast from last week. So fair play, my man, and delighted to be on with you. Uh, yeah, no, we're looking forward to the game on Sunday now. Um, <clears throat> Monaghan, obviously, the biggest, probably the, the biggest rival that we have. Um, you know, it's, it's a local derby. They're only down the road from us. Uh, you could really throw a stone and you'd, 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 you'd hit the likes of, uh, you'd hit the likes of Clonus. We're so, so close. So it's hard to believe, as you say, um, obviously with the league finals being on there last weekend and you know, obviously the ferocious games we had on Sunday, like obviously Dublin and Derry, and I suppose hopefully this weekend those follow suit and we have some good battles. But yeah, like it's 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 quick, I suppose. On the players, you're hearing a lot of teams with players being injured, and I suppose the 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 quickness and sharpness of games. And you know, I wonder, like I'd I'd love to know from a player point of view, are the like loving the amount of games that's happening week on week on kind of thing. But um, it's fast, it's ferocious, and I suppose it's something we really really will need to acclimatize because it doesn't look like it's going to be changing. But no, it's it's hard to believe it is championship this weekend. Unfortunately, we just at the minute don't look like we have the weather for championships. So hopefully, maybe the weather at the weekend improves. But you no, know, um, we're looking forward to it on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. So uh, actually, on the first point you made about the RT podcast, I think R- Rory O'Neill actually mentioned me. I think a few weeks ago Rory, about the, the Cork footballers. Well, well, you're on again. I don't know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll have to go back through the podcast Fine. and stuff like that. So it is, it is brilliant that I'm being, being uh, mentioned and other people are being mentioned. It's, it shows the Trojan work being done across the GA circles as well, uh, across these accounts. So uh, brilliant to see, brilliant to see. And um, and yeah, I suppose the championship is starting after the league finals last weekend. You mentioned the ferocious nature of Derry and Dublin last week. There's been a few probably up, uproars in many ways in the, on the Sunday game, on podcasts about the fact that the league finals are happening just before the championship even begins. Like I think Seamus and Aaron had that discussion on Aaron's podcast during the week as well about... Um, players not getting the, su- the sufficient amount of rest. And I think that speaks volumes uh, throughout uh, the GA community and stuff like that, and the season is condensed. Do you think in general that the championship is starting too quick? And the fact that there isn't much build-up to the championship this week, I think here McCarthy tweeted during the week as well, you'd hardly know the Cork footballers are up against Limerick this weekend uh, with the little coverage that's going on with uh, the matches in general in the championship. So do you think that's a worry? Yeah, no, it, it it is, and I suppose, and I know we don't always like to give out, and we suppose we like to kind of stay positive, but it's kind of like it does see, it does feel like it's it it is fairly rushed, and it's kind of like the championships here, and it's kind of upon us really, but it's um. You, I, look, it, 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 do, it does feel like it's a bit rushed and it does feel like it's a bit condensed and it, it's nearly like we're kind of like rushing something that we nearly don't need to rush, it to rush to a degree and obviously I know we're trying to help the club game as best as we can with games and release the county players and you know the scheduling and I know it's obviously it's, it's, it, it can be a nightmare for people the, the higher powers and organising at times but, but it's um it does feel like it's kind of week on week off and I suppose like, as you say like the PR around the games like is there even much time to get even kind of player interviews done and get kind of manager insights and get kind of you know a bit of a buzz and a bit of excitement going for the game because obviously everyone of course is aware that we are playing Clo- uh, sorry Monaghan in Clones on Sunday and they're obviously the, the flags are up the buzz is happening but um it does feel like it is kind of rushed and it kind of just feels like it's like you know bang 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 but I just don't think we need to. I suppose have like that. I think there you could you could have your two week break and maybe like I said, I, what I did find um I was obviously watching off the ball there last weekend and I was watching the interviews with all the managers after the games and literally Desi Dolan was li- li- saying after Westmead bet down that um 
you know, the Westmead lads couldn't even go out and enjoy it after. They couldn't even have a couple of points after the game or go out and have a bit of crack. So it does go to show we prob- if we probably are rushing things a bit, I think there's a lot to be said for giving the players a two-week break because I always said to you, Matthew, if we didn't have the players, we wouldn't have the product. So, um, yeah, it definitely does feel rush. I, I I think it can be very tough for the players, but I'd love to get, like, obviously, like, I know obviously county players kind of have to be very closed book, close books these days, unfortunately. I'd love to get their insight in terms of what the make make of the game on game kind of thing, but um, yeah, it's 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 definitely interesting. But look at it, it's like anything else in life. It, it, it's it's here now. It look doesn't look like it's going to be changing anytime soon. So we just have to adapt to it. Yeah, exactly. So like it's a it's a big topic of discussion this week. And Denise saying uh, hi to Denise coming into the podcast today. She says uh, even if the football all Ireland was mid August, the week of the NGFA finals, it would get, get more attention for NGFA and give the players a rest period. In fairness, yeah, I think that could be looked at in fairness. But at the same time, I think me and Seamus discussed it on my own podcast last week as well about um, the pre-season competitions and probably the meaningless nature of them. And considering... Like if you ban the preseason competitions, you could put the league mid January and then have a two week or at least a week uh, rest for players in preparation for the championship. And as Desi Dolan rightly said about Westmead, like you couldn't go for points or you couldn't go celebrating on the streets of Mullingar after a brilliant Division Three win over Down because they're playing this weekend against Wicklow. So, like a lot of change need to be done in the G um, the G in general, but. Oh, I will say the split season is probably the right way to go about things. They do have the right idea because clubs need as much time as intercounty at the same time. But the rush nature needs to be fixed. Yeah, sorry, Matthew, you're just breaking up there. But no, no, it, it's it's definitely it's you can hear me okay, yeah. All good. You can you can hear me okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, no, sorry, I, I just got the I just didn't get the end up. But no, it is it it is it's it's definitely it is it is definitely a good point to make. And I suppose like again, you can make an argument as well. No, obviously Desi Dolan, when you're the manager of a county team, you kinda of have to really kind of set your stone, but it does go to kind of go to show like you, you see in the likes of the rugby and you know, like the players maybe have a couple of cans after the game. Kind of does go to show like the GA players probably do get the short end of the stick in terms of, you know, being able to enjoy themselves and the serious nature of the GA. So it is kind of unfortunate that Westmead couldn't even go out and, I suppose, enjoy it. But look, it is game on game. It's a full weekend of fixtures this weekend, I suppose. But look, I suppose people are, people, like, you know, everyone's kind of creatures of nature and, you know, they're kind of, you know, creature of ha- creatures of habit even. Like, people love to kind of stick it to the routine and, you know, the, the, the normal stuff that we had years ago. But um, look, as I said, it, it, it it's here to stay. We have to kind of get on with it. But yeah, it it, it, it definitely doesn't feel like there's much, uh, much, uh, much respite between the players um players of management teams was coming from there and the things I suppose we're touching on a couple of seconds and um, we had that two weeks from the Fermanagh game so you know we, we have had two weeks so it's not like we've just had the one week so the two weeks hopefully fingers crossed have benefited us but uh we'll wait and see on Sunday yeah exactly so so we will get into the games obviously enough about uh, discussing calendars and stuff like that and uh, we will discuss the Ulster Championship first of all <laughs> before we get into the Monaghan and Cavan game uh, we'll discuss uh, the bracket here so this is the bracket the official bracket for the Ulster Championship this season so you have Monaghan against Cavan in the preliminary round as you can see on the left hand side of the screen there the winners of that play are own and they're on the same side as Derry and Donegal and then you look at the other side of the draw basically three sides the are right as of now with the Tartan Cup at this present moment in time and Armagh. So you would expect Armagh to get to the final. But with Dow losing last weekend, we'll have to see how they um, bounce back from that defeat in Crow Park. And we will get on to the first game. It is John's Cavan going to Monaghan, going to Clonus in the Ulster Senior Football Championship preliminary round on Sunday, 4pm, live on RT2 and BBC2 Northern Ireland. So two channels to watch the game so you could choose your analyst that's brilliant to see actually you could choose uh, the BBC analyst would Ocean McCann will be well actually Wicklow are playing aren't they against uh, Westmead that day so he won't be on but um, other analysts I'm sure will pop on BBC Northern Ireland of course Michael Murphy could be on as well RT could be boring so you have the choice of going to BBC2 Northern Ireland that so uh, so yeah big game for Cavan John and considering actually the Alliance League rankings that I put on Instagram last week Monaghan are 10th and Cavan are 11th that's actually closer than most people probably perceive going into this game. So yeah. it's a close one to call. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it, it, I just I was just laughing there when you're saying uh, it was on our BBC and RT. We, we could we couldn't get a league game on TV uh, for the whole, throughout the league, so it's good to see we're finally getting a bit of coverage. But of course, it's going to be challenged. Of course, it's going to be coverage off it. But um, no, look, th- this is this is going to be tight on Sunday. There there is no getting away from it. Um, Obviously, Monaghan did have a poor league campaign, and I think they'll admit themselves that they just didn't perform and didn't play well. Um, and obviously, Cavan, you know, from our point of view, I think our last as our last three league games were just very, very, very poor, very poor performances. Um, I know, obviously, when we bet you guys up in Cork, that like, okay, we were, we were, we were safe at that stage, and maybe. The mindset was okay. We're safe. Like, do we kind of, you know, do, do, do we kind of maybe start weekend teams, or do we say, you know, do we do we pack up the centre, kind of go home, kind of thing? So, if Kane kind of feels a cabin did to a degree, we just it, 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 we just didn't perform. And I, I, I keep I keep saying it like only for only for Paddy Lynch at, at times, you know, probably throughout the league, Cavan probably would have struggled. So we're, we're just so so blessed and lucky to have him uh, playing for Cavan, and he's he's flying at the minute. But um, no, this 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 is a vital right that goes on for years and years and years and unfortunately from the, I, I was watching the highlights there of the COVID game in 2020 when uh, Ray Gallagher kicked the last minute free to to, to send it to, to get the victory for Cavan obviously the, the year of the one Ulster then Cavan would have bet them in 2019 and years previous to that Oman would have had her would have had her number so it really does go down the middle and uh, Monaghan will be mad to put one over especially after us getting the victories in recent times so it just yeah it's going to be very tight um Modern people are actually really, really friendly, nice people. But God, when it comes to football, when it when it, when it comes to passing that white line, things things change fairly swiftly. But looking into it, um, I I was obviously looking at the uh, modern team. The modern team was um released there about half an hour ago <coughs> on Twitter. So obviously Rory Began, that's the breaking news that he's going to be on the bench uh, this weekend. And obviously Rory, we know about the experience of that man. He's 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 been one his number one for the last eleven years. So he's a remarkable goalkeeper, and obviously. Top of the left, Conor McManus, 15 starting. So two men that, you know, need very little introduction. I think they're going to be play, play a huge part. It'd be interesting to see Manzi's role on Sunday. Obviously, Manzi, you know, he's, he's probably coming near the end at this stage, but he probably still is worth at least five or six points to the man and Eifert on Sunday. So them pair boys will definitely need a lot of watching. Um, and obviously, you have the likes of Darren Hughes in midfield, the, the time is Darren Hughes and Jack McCarron full forward. Be interesting, could Jack McCarron turn up on Sunday as well? He obviously, we obviously see the how well he does in the league. You know, be interesting to come championship, how he'll be fixed. Michal Bannigan on the bench, I heard he was injured. Be interesting to see if any kind of part to play on Sunday. And then from our own, then the things um, from the Cavan and the things uh, most notable absentees for Sunday is no Darren McFeedy. I think Darren McFeedy's due to get an operation, so he's out. Uh, Killian Clark, I am not sure. I think he may be injured. He's not in the 26. And then Jason McLaughlin is not in the 26 either. So I don't know where both men injured. I'm not sure. Uh, Jason McLaughlin was watching the Fermanagh game from the stands the last day out. And Killian Clark got subbed off at half time. So it'd be very interesting to see. Um, it's a it's a nice kind of blend of a team mix kind of um, on Sunday. Like you have a lot of kind of youth and experience. Obviously, you know, Pork Faulkner, Kieran Brady, joint captains, and then a full forward line of Key Matt and Paddy Lynch, Oshin Brady. So it is it is there is kind of nice variety in the team there's a few men that i probably if i was to make a guess probably won't start on are due to be starting but probably won't start i can probably see maybe Keen riley cornerback for Cavan potentially uh losing out on sunday i could see ocean karen and uh den a uh, midfielder i could potentially see him just losing out if i was to make a guess at it and who comes in for him i would be thinking potentially luke fortune and maybe who else in midfield there potentially uh, potentially Connor Rehill maybe in a in a kind of switch around there, but it'll be very interesting to see and does Connor Brady maybe go to midfield. So yeah, I don't think the the team that starts with Cavan probably will start. So I think there'll be a bit of kind of swapping and change and maybe uh, just before, just when the national anthem's happening or when the teams are doing the parade, I think there'll be a few uh, juggling juggling balls. But look at it, it's 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 it definitely whets the appetite. It's definitely the sign of championship when uh, late changes come in, and uh, oh, it is going to be late changes. Cavett, as you mentioned there, and I looked at the yeah. Bannon uh, bench in general. I've, you mentioned yeah. Rory Began, that is the main story. Michal Bannigan's actually number 21. I don't know, is that an injury or what's not? But if he's fit enough, he probably has to start for Monaghan as well. So you'd expect him to make a few changes. Um, David Garland starting a corner forward, which is an interesting one. He's the, he was the top scorer in the Sigurdsson Cup, I think it was, earlier on the year for UCD. So 
he's going to be a big player for Monaghan. Jack McCarr is going to be interesting, as you mentioned there. But I think the main news, as you mentioned before, and before we got on there uh, this morning, is Rory Began is on the bench for Monaghan after his NFL exploits. So you would expect him to start. There's no doubt about it. Um, Darren McDonald has done well to an extent in Division 1 for Monaghan, but you would expect Rory Began to start this game. And what a game to start it against your rivals, Captain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at it. <laughs> it's uh, there's no point. Like I, 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 I probably, I'm, I'm probably hard to not show my emotion. But no, uh, Rory Began, my God, when I think it was Niall McCoy from the RG tweeted that the, tweeted that there this morning. I was probably yeah. It's 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 like anything else. It's it's probably more of a task now for the Cavan can it Cavan management team of players can you get up for now? And I, I suppose obviously the news did break on Monday that Rory Began there was talk of him being back from on and I think he is going very well over in New York or sorry American things are going to plan for him so you know is he back for this game and the next game who knows or I, I, I'd be very interested to see what his input is so that will be very interesting but wow my god what a man to bring back into your setup. Darren McDonald, in fairness, I was, I was listening to Kieran Hanratty on the Gaelic Life uh, podcast there yesterday, and he was basically saying that Darren McDonald he has, what he had a relatively okay kind of league. So uh, you have to be expecting Rory begging to be between the six. You you'd be expecting Rory to be doing the parade now on Sunday. Um, he's a huge addition. Um, so so much experience. He just has an absolute. Oh, he's he's the right foot to die for. Like I've I've I've, be, I've never really seen a boot like his ever really to be honest with you he, 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 he just he's such a leader for that Monaghan team and obviously I think you know when Ray Galligan and the boys probably seen him when they seen the Monaghan team come in uh, this morning and obviously seeing Began on the bench you know probably alarm stations to a degree but I, I to be honest with you I'd say they were well prepared once they got word on Monday that Began there was even talk of Began you have to be thinking that he was, they were planning accordingly for it and I think <clears throat> the way Monaghan and Cavan games have been the last year been so close been so tentative you know so much on the line uh, I think so much will come down to free taking like it did in 2020, like it did in 2019, even 17, 13, 15. So I think Began could at least, he will be so, so important. You know, obviously match fitness, I'm presuming he's been looking after himself. That'll be no problem. So I think it'll be the very game where Began will be needed. Conor McManus will be needed. Paddy Lynch will be needed. Um, you know, Ray Galligan, you know, obviously he's retired now. Obviously, obviously, it, it, obviously Paddy Lynch has taken out over the free taking role. But yeah, it, it definitely adds a huge strength to the bow, Matthew. It definitely does, yeah. And uh, like you mentioned, free taking there, like Paddy Lynch will be absolutely massive as well. Division two top scorer, and um, like how crucial will he be for uh, for Monaghan to deal with? Because like he was in an excellent form in Division two, and how important actually is it for Cavan in general for others to step up other than uh, um, other than Paddy Lynch? Because you would see Garo McHearn retire in the off season, or uh, has left the panel. Connor Mine has left in, uh, the panel in the off season. Darren McVitie, as you mentioned, is injured. An excellent footballer there as well. How important is this for other, other footballers? Like Kieran Brady, to be fair, has done really well for Arva in the club championship and for Captain in Division Two. But how important is it for others to step up other than Paddy Lynch? Ah, yeah, Matthew, look at it. It's key. And I, I suppose I was saying this to after, I was saying this to Tom, Thomas Niblock after the, the meet game there a couple about a month ago. Like, it is so important that Paddy Lynch does get help. And you know, we do see a full forward line there of Key and Madden, Paddy Lynch and Oshin Brady, but I, I can't see Key and Madden starting in that very position. I'd be very surprised if he starts corner forward. So, you know, is it a full forward line of Paddy Lynch and Oshin Brady on Sunday? We'll have to wait and see. It just it's just been unfortunate for Paddy and like he really has had to do basically everything going forward for Cavan. I know James Smith has been very good as well, coming from midfield, but it ha- we have been very reliant on Paddy Lynch in the scores, and as you say, if you have you have you uh, rightly put out or pointed out that Paddy was the top scorer in Division Two, and you know he he had a great league campaign, but realistically there wasn't much other scorers really coming from the Cav end of things, and that would be a concern for Sunday because realistically Monaghan done a very very sorry me done a very good job on Paddy in the league and basically bottled him up, and I'm looking at a full back line here for Monaghan of Ryan Wiley, Kieran Duffy, and Ryan O'Toole, and. You're presuming Ryan Wiley probably will pick him up. I'd say Kira Duffy be it'd be kind of interesting. More than likely, the pair of boys will be. Maybe Wiley might be in front of him, and Duffy might be on him completely. But I think Mon- if Monaghan do bottle him up, and I was only saying this a couple of minutes there earlier on, that I think I think if if they bottle and the will bottle Paddy Lynch up, there is no doubt about it. I just I I struggle really to see where Cavan can get the scores from because. As I said, you maybe Oshin Karen and Castrahan there. Oshin has a serious left foot. Uh, he's a club mate of mine. He's a great footballer. Be interested to see can, I, can he kind of chip in with a few scores. We see Jared Smith there as well. Kieran Holler Brady's listed at ten, but 
again, will he start to play around that area? I'm not too sure. Will he be kind of be in the around the half kind of half back in the line? So look, I think Oshin Brady. Not to put kind of too much pressure on him, but he will, if he does start on Sunday, he will need a huge performance. We really will need to see a big game from him. Oshin, there's lots of football in Oshin. He's, he's, he's a Killigary club man there. He's, he's a great footballer. So he will really need to be top of the pops. But yeah, look, it, 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 uh, it, it's so unfortunate because Darren McVitie, obviously we know about the power and progress of that man. If he, he Obviously he's getting an operation so he is out on Sunday. But yeah, bar Paddy Lynch throughout the league and hopefully for Sunday someone else can step up because Paddy will badly, badly need help. And um James Smith from midfield there could give him a good hand, but obviously James will be kind of you know operating out the field and kind of you know doing a lot of work out the field and we won't be hoping for him to be up the field the whole time, but he, he will need to be doing a lot of hard work again. But yeah, he 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 will need he will need a lot of help, Matthew. There is no doubt about that. Two kind of angles I was thinking about as well. Uh, number one, actually, you mentioned Oshin Brady got the winner against Cork as well, so that's why I remember him. Like he's a very good footballer on his day in fairness. Um, uh, two points that I wanted to mention as well. Uh, uh, there was a guy on the bench that I noticed for Calvin, Tristan Noah Kaufman. I think he played for Arva in the club championship. He played midfield alongside yeah. here on Brady. Could he come into the team? Could he add something? He could, Matthew. Um, he, um, it, 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 Tristan's a, he's he's a fantastic athlete. Um, he would have played a lot of league Ar- league of Ireland uh, football. I think he played for like Longford Town and a few other teams. So he's he's experienced there as well. And he might have even have um, played underage Ar- soccer for Ireland as well. Tristan, he's a very very good athlete. Um, I don't know. Like I was watching, a, obviously watching all the Cavan games throughout the league, and I just don't think Ray sees Tristan in his plans at the minute. Um, obviously, again, he is a very good athlete, but I, I just don't know. He didn't. He I don't think he got any minutes against for man, and he, he's kind of been in and out of coming on as substitute appearances. So I just don't think Ray really sees him part of his plans, and that's probably being perfectly honest. Um, and obviously Tristan, like he, he is a great player, and he, as you say, he did have a very good kind of club campaign for Arva throughout that whole season. Really, he was fantastic, but unfortunately, he just doesn't look like he's part of Ray's plans. It's unfortunate. Like he seems like a very good yeah. footballer in general. But uh, before we get into the predictions as well, like uh, Eamon Murray, he's a big guy in the backroom team for Cavan. I seen, think I've seen an article on Twitter about his influence on Ray McGalligan being an incoming coach, more or less. Ray McGalligan's a good coach, but he is still young and he needs that guidance. And Eamon Murray is definitely one guy to do that. He's won them um, two All Irelands in a row in NGFA for Bees. Like, how big has his influence been for Cavan this year, uh, Eamon Murray? Because like he seems like a good guy from the outside. Yeah, Eamon's, Eamon's a top class coach. He's um he's an unbelievable amount of experience. He's a good guy, man. Um, he'll he he'll he'll add so much to that backroom team. And obviously, we we've we've a star story backroom team. But Eamon, he brings experience. He's a winner. He's a very kind of cool, calm, collected uh, man along the sideline. There, he he doesn't get too kind of you know he doesn't get too overdrawn by the occasion. I, I think he'll do a lot of homework and study on Monaghan this weekend. So Eamon, he's a, he's a great addition. Um, as you say. Obviously, great experience, and obviously Ray being his, you know, his first first year as Cavan manager, like he 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 he'll add a lot to Ray, and he'll he'll give him all the advice on the sun. So he he's been a great addition this year. Obviously, we know the success that he had with the Mead Ladies, and it'll be very interesting. The um, those in the future, obviously, like you know, is is this the ceiling? Like, does he kind of want to be part of backup teams, or will he take him in? Senior team would be very interesting. But yeah, Aim's been a great addition, it's huge experience. Um. Blessed to have McCavan and in fairness, you know, Mead's loss was definitely Cavan's game because my god, he was he was hot property when he finished up with the uh, Mead ladies. Yeah, exactly. So like he was he was a brilliant um, manager in ladies football in general and it's great to see him in Cavan in general. But uh, before we get on to the predictions as well, another comment in from Denise. I go for a surprise Monaghan comeback in this game and hope they'll bring the intensity in the Dublin League game. I have a feeling, John, you don't like Denise after that. But um uh, I, but I'd, we, I'd, go for a, <laughs> I'd go for a surprise Monaghan comeback in this game. Yeah, look like, but that's that, that's probably where that's where the, that's how title will be. And I think, you know, in twenty twenty when we were playing Monaghan in the COVID championship, you know, they probably did really let us back into that game. Like they were drifting at half time. I think they'd six or seven points up on us at half time. So they were they were in the ascendancy in that particular game. So they really did let us back into it. So is that going to be the same case on Sunday? Do Monin get out the traps really quick and then at half time Monin or you know Cavan come back, can they come back into it? It'll be very very interesting. Um 
so you know, from that point of view, it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. But I think Monin will learn from the mistakes. I think Banty McEnany was over Monin that year to COVID. And um, Banty was very disappointed with how maybe Monin went about their business that second half. But I think Monin will be a fine, well oiled machine. And then another key point in this as well, Marty Corey. His Vinny's uh, brother, obviously, he's Marty's in the back room, and sure, Marty Curry would have worked with Vinny. Sorry, Marty Curry would have worked with Calvin for the last three or four years previous to this. So Marty will know the Calvin players inside and out. So that's probably an early word of point to do the morning on Sunday. So it'll be it'll be interesting. So Mar- Marty's a top class coach, and he, he Jesus, we're forever indebted to him up here in Calvin. He done sterling work with Castor and Calvin. So he, he's a great coach. Um, so it'll be interesting. I, I won't. I don't think he likes me. Anyways, being uh, from Longford, and him. Ah, no, not at all. Longford people are absolutely fantastic. The, we, we, there's always a good bit of crack when the, there's a local derby there. We, we've always had your number, so uh, we can't, we we can't give out about you just too much. Exactly. Yeah, Longford the Division Four haven't nearly went up to Division One. Like that's that's just you crazy, know you can't crazy. you can't be picky on. You know you can't be picky on uh, small companies like that. But uh, but in fairness, like Cavan and Monaghan prediction time, like. I, for me, look, I'm going to say Cavan will win this game because I think Gaelic Game uh, Fan TV, a comment on that video, said, I think it was his video anyway, that if Cavan don't win this game, they never will win against a top quality opposition because of the games against Armagh, Tyrone, though, through the years as well. So you'd feel like with Monaghan going down to Division 2 and Cavan being on upward trajectory, you would imagine Cavan will eye this game and say this is a chance to stamp our authority. Yeah, like a hundred percent, and I know obviously people can kind of everyone everyone has opinions and bits and bobs like that. But I think this game, and I suppose the, the perfect thing you could basically say is after that court game against Hughes in the league. I think you nearly think I wonder does a lot of focus go into the Ultra Championship after that game because I really do think obviously the huge the hugeness of this game on Sunday is always going to be talked about but I wonder did focus nearly turn to Monaghan after that court game because obviously the performances we put in after the court game. We're very, very poor. So, like, you know, you wonder, like, does focus just turn when we get, when we save ourselves in Division 2? Do we, 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 it just looked like we started resting lads and maybe lads got kind of breaks and bits and bobs. And I know poor Faulkner uh, missed the last couple of games and, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, we bits and bobs like that. But look, I think it, as you, like, as that commenter did say, like, we never win a big, like, it, it'll, you know, we we got good got good wins this week, but it, it is obviously it's a Division One team. We do we do need to start beating, and I suppose if we, if we have any ambitions of you know getting up to Division One, we really, as you say, will need to start beating some of these top class teams. Your your obviously your your Monans, your Armaz, your Russ Commons, and we could see Russ Common again next year. He's start to be <laughs> same division again, but um, yeah, no, it's it, it is a good point, but it is like I think this on Sunday, and to be perfectly honest with you, I think I said this in Aaron's podcast at the very start of the year. Stay put in Division 2 and beat Mon in the Championship. Anything after that, I genuinely would be happy because I don't feel we're at Derry's level. Um, it, it probably annoys me to say this, but I think Armagh is a good bit ahead of us as well. Derry's probably streets ahead of us at the minute as well. Don't go look like they're improving all the time. So, yeah, it's just being realistic. Win on Sunday and then whatever happens after that, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, you look, that was probably the main aim for most Cavan fans at the start of the season. But uh, are you predicting your own Cavan to go on and win the game, or are you going for the rival in Manham? Yeah, I look at it. I I I I have to go with Cavan in this one. I I'd love to see Cavan get the win. It, it would be it would be great to see. It'd be great to get the win on Sunday. I think the supporters deserve it. You know, the Cavan fans will travel down to Clo- Clo- Clonus and their thousands. Um, very well supported team. Rain, hail, or sun. They'll always come out in fairness to them. So. I think Cavan hopefully will win a KG affair. I, again, I said at the start of the show, Monaghan will be absolutely mad to put one over us after the last couple of victories we've had against them. But it's a local derby. It's a championship game. Fingers crossed all goes to plan for Cavan and we, we get the win because um, last week we finished off the league badly. You know, let's start the championship well. Yeah, I'm going to go for a captain win as well and uh, hopefully for your sake they start the Ulster Championship as they did with the league this season. So uh, it should be a very interesting game obviously live on RT2 on Sunday. We'll move on to the Connor Championship now and this is the bracket of the draw there. So you have New York and Mayo, the quarterfinal, the winner of that plays Roscommon and then you have Galway, London, Leitrim and Sligo all on the same side of the draw. So no lopsided draws this year. So no 
like unex- unexpected team in the Connacht final this year, uh, unlike last year. So you will have Mayo or Ross Common against Galway, more or less um, predicted anyway, um, to be the Connacht final. But we'll start off with uh, the game on Saturday, live on GA Go. It is London against Galway and Ryslip on Saturday at 3 p.m. Like I know it's a trip over for Galway. They did struggle in parts in the league, but anything other than a Galway win here would be absolutely crazy. Yeah, no, I think Galway, as, as I said, my own podcast there on Monday night matches that I think it's 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 stretched the stretched legs for Galway in this particular game. I think it, it could be a cricket score, really. Um, you know, do we see the likes of Shane Comer? Or sorry, Shane Walsh and Damian Comer appear in this game? I'm not too sure. Like, does Galway just have enough on the team of course to do? Um I don't yeah, think it's, we're it's, going to see during the 26 John. They're not they're in the 26. The they're, they're, no. Yeah, they're, and, and look, and to be honest with you, there's probably no point because I think they, they won't be needed on Saturday. Um, yeah, look, Matthew, it's like anything else. It's provincials. It's it's, it's just so unfair in London. Neither team's going to learn anything from this game on Saturday. Sorry, tomorrow, Saturday. Neither team's going to learn anything. It's just going to be stretched leg up, 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 up exercise for Galway. And it's just really by how much... Um, it's just it's it's so unfortunate for your New Yorks and Londons this weekend because New York are playing Mayo on Sunday and it, uh, Cav man Alan Lamar's obviously we touched that game now in a few minutes but he's managing them and you know it, it, it they just it, they just really don't have a hope it's it, it is so unfortunate but um yeah this game tomorrow yeah you could be looking at a 15 20 point win for Galway I'd be very surprised if if if, if London even get near them but it's just unfortunate. Michael Maher's doing unbelievable work with the London lads um he's putting so much time and effort into it um. But you'd love to think, is there a bit of a rethink needed regarding all this? Or is there something else we could do maybe to, you know, bring New York and kind of, you know, New York and London into this kind of conic championship without getting these drubbins? Because, you know, God was going to go over there. Pork Joyce is going to learn absolutely nothing. Maybe bar, you know, getting one or two lads out and, you know, letting off the shackles a bit. But it's, um, oh, unfortunately, Matthew, it just, it, it, it just feels like a, a bit of a waste of time for both teams. But there you go. Yeah, it does, to be honest. There is some very good uh, young talent in the Galway team. I think Tom O'Callaghan's on the bench, Rory Cunningham's on the bench, so expect them maybe to run asunder this London team. It is unfortunate, as you mentioned there. They had a good season a couple of years ago, London. They drew against Leash at the Tasman Cup last year, which shouldn't be forgotten, but Galway should ease past in this game. And uh, I think uh, the, the, the less said about that game, the better, to be honest with you, because there's not much to discuss. But it, and certain other, point- uh, I'm yeah. sorry, one little thing. Like, it isn't so, like, me and you for, probably for this conversation so many times. It's so unfortunate, like, this is our product and this is what we're talking about. And me and you will be having the same conversation next year. We'll have the same conversation in 2026. We'll have the same conversation in 2027. The problem's right in front of us. Surely we can fix it, but, yeah, go on ahead. Yeah, it's it's going to be, if we're going to discuss even more one-sided games in general. And uh, yeah. I don't know, would this be a one-sided game as such? It is to do New York against Mayo in the Bronx on Sunday at 8pm on GA Go because Mayo are an excellent team in Division 1, no doubt about it. But New York, it's it's far away from home for the Mayo lads. I know it's a holiday and stuff like that, but it is far away from home. And New York are the unknown. Obviously, London play in the league, so we know who are playing for them. But for New York, I still don't know who who is actually going to line out for them. I know Johnny Glynn's got back to Galway. He's playing with the Galway Hurlers this year. Adrian Varley, I think, is going to be on the team, but that, that hasn't been confirmed yet. Mark Ellis from Cork, I'm not sure. Like That's the thing with New York, we're not sure. The only thing we do mm. know, obviously, as you mentioned previously, is Alan O'Mara is coming in as manager. So, uh, first of all, before we dip into the game in general, uh, what can Alan O'Mara, as a cabin man yourself, add to New York um, from the success last year? Ah, uh, yeah, Alan. It, Alan's, he's a, he's a top-class fella. Um, Alan... It- he he played in goals for the under twenty ones in two thousand eleven. Obviously, he won an Ulster title, got the ball rolling with that kind of under twenty one success. The start of a four in a row journey. Uh, he would have played for Cavan Seniors, I think, from the years of thirteen. 14 and 16 and then he, he departed the panel after 16 but um yeah Alan his attention to detail would be fantastic obviously he had a kind of he's had his struggles in the past and his mental health and he, he was one of the first GA players to kind of co- talk about his story and obviously fair play to him and he he re- released the book and everything so he's he's, he's a great kind of he'd be a great player a great man Obviously, for like the mindset of the players and checking in with players and looking after players, so I think his I think his commitment to the cause would be fantastic. I think he's in America 
he, you could be, I'd say, probably the last maybe six or seven years at this stage. He, he's been there quite some time, and he, he obviously is a fiance over there, so he's life built over there at this stage. And obviously, a big loss to Calvin football. So, but Alan, yeah, his attention to detail would be brilliant. Um, he'd be a very, very nice lad. He'd be, he'd be a great fella to work with. Um, I'd say the New York lads are you know, working really well with him. Um, and obviously, like, he, he's. You know, he's again kind of Greg Gallagher. He's cut this team of management. I don't think he was managing really anywhere before. I know he played a bit with the Longford, uh, Longford New York footballers over there out there, and he, he was relatively successful with them too. So yeah, I think he he'll give the job a really good crack again. Probably unfortunate that he's coming up against Mayo on Sunday. Um, you know, Mayo will be coming in hot and heavy uh, to, to uh, on Sunday. But look. I wish him all the best because obviously when he was playing for Cavan and obviously the work he was doing right here regarding mental health and talks and bits and bobs, he was really, you know, leaving no stones unturned. So yeah, he'd be, he'd be a really, really good fella and I really just hope it kind of does go well for him and it'd be interesting to see, like, does he do two, three years with him or is it a project for him or does he do this year and finish up? So it'd be very interesting to see what his input and role is, but yeah, he, he'll do well. Yeah, exactly. Seems like a very good guy. He was uh, interviewing a few people on uh, the GPA as well. I was actually doing an FYP on uh, on gambling in our sport and he interviewed Martin Stapool from Kerry. That was a brilliant interview. Uh, listen, if you haven't already, yeah. and uh, he's definitely a brilliant guy uh, to, to know in the GA, no doubt about it. Um, another comment here from Denise about Mayo. I was very surprised to see Patrick Hoare on the bench after his performance against Monaghan. More than likely, that will change. So... Like then again, do they need to bring in Patrick Ahora? But at the same time, like New York brought Ross Common to the inch of their lives. I'm not sure off the top of my head what year it was. I think it was 16. I think it was 2016 actually when Kev, when he, Kevin McStay was over for Ross Common coincidentally, and they reached the league semi-finals. So New York brought them to I think a point or extra time that time. So could yeah. lightning strike twice? Like New York had a very good year last year, um, mm-hmm. because because obviously the Bronx is a very tough place to go for any team, no matter if it's Mayo, Galway, Ross Common for any team. Yeah, no, like I, I, I was watching Kevin McStay. I think it was at the Connacht Championship preview, um, that off the ball done, and like he, he was very, very like focused, and he, he literally looked like he was kind of he wasn't giving Tommy Rooney much of it. So I think. I think they will be very focused going over there and he, he did say like it's not a holiday like they have to get the job done like they can go out after and enjoy it themselves but they're going over it's business time for Mayo now <clears throat> they're in the Connacht Championship it's big stuff for them now Mayo obviously Kevin McStay is in year two of that project so I think they'll be really going over there with the intentions of having no blips or no 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 F-ups uh, for want of a better phrase I think he will be going over there to put in a big performance again as you say New York probably surprise package I know Michael Argue was playing for them uh, Michael Argue was on the Cavan team for the last couple of years and under 21 so he, he's a big big man um, He's he'd be a fellow club mate of Alan O'Mara's um, uh, Bailey Power Shamrocks here in Cavan so Michael Argue will be starting on Sunday I, I'd make no doubt about it so he could be well used to some of the Mayo lads but I think Mayo will go over there and do a professional job I'd be very like, look, I know Leitrim obviously Leitrim were kind of uh, left with the table between their legs last year, but no, I listened to Kevin McStay there, I think it was a Monday or Tuesday, they look like they're going to be doing a job. Look, it'd be great to see New York put in a big performance, obviously, you know, obviously, I don't. I think Shane Carty, um, I don't think Shane Carty's about the New York team this year, he, he was playing for them last year, I remember I was talking to Shane Carty on the podcast, so I, so I think they're minus the services of Shane, and she's what a footballer Shane is, but um, yeah, I really do hope New York put in a performance, you know, that it's not a, you know, a, a you know, a 15, 20 point win for Mayo and obviously everyone leaves kind of, and everyone le- doesn't leave happy, but look, let's hope Alan, you know, gets a performance out of these lads and no doubt he's, he's pre- been prepping all week for the uh, Mayo, the Mayo uh, onslaught. We'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll have to see. It'll be very interesting to see actually because um, New York had a brilliant year last year, obviously beating Leitrim, as you mentioned there, uh, going over to Ireland to play against Sligo in the Connacht Championship. That was a brilliant occasion for them. And then coming close to Carlo, the Tottenham Cup, um, if it, many people forgot that. So, like, that was a brilliant year for New York, no doubt about mm-hmm. it. And they're going to try and create more history again. But Mayo, like, May, the, the, the frank reality of this is I know New York did well and fair play to them last year, but Mayo are not Leitrim. No disrespect to Leitrim now, but Mayo are a Division 1 team. They didn't reach the league final. They'd be ready to go for this game. Kevin McStay said in the interviews, as you mentioned there, that it's not a holiday. They'll be primed to win this game shortly. 
Ah, yeah, my tune. Like it, it, it's probably it's it's it probably kind of goes without saying. The, the will go over there. I think the will get a performance. Um, I suppose obviously anyone kind of tuning in or potentially watching it, like will be obviously looking out for all. Oh, can New York do it? Or you know, they, they'll be looking. They <laughs> might be getting a bit excited looking at the odds, looking at this. But I think realistically, Mayo will go over there. They'll get the job done. They'll push themselves into the kind of core semi final. I think would they be able to get over yeah. over yeah, line up on this? So. Yeah, like so, and obviously they've the the vote the plover is coming after last year as well. But um, no, I think I think it will be a, 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 a like look, it would be fantastic to see like and obviously the dreamers and you know of of, of this life and you know it would be fantastic to see you know New York kind of you know try get something out of the game. But it, like I think from Alan Lamar's point of view, he's probably looking. I'm presuming this is a project for him with New York. If he's going to be there for the foreseeable, it's it's a probably maybe a two to three year contract that he has. So he's probably looking to just get. Run, lads, see what way they can kind of set up. Obviously, Mayo's a, a fantastic team, a fantastic outfit, so well coached. So he's probably just looking to try out lads and see how he gets on. But look at, we wish him the best luck because um, no doubt he's putting a lot of work into it. So the very best luck to him and Michael Argue and all the lads. Yeah, exactly. It is, it's, 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 it's brilliant to actually see uh, you got an insight into the New York team that Michael Argue is in the team because I wouldn't have yeah. known that before coming onto the podcast. So a, a great uh, plug there. But uh, yeah, we'd have to expect Mayo to go on and win that game. And uh, in the other kind of quarter mine, which I don't know, is this the closest one to call? Uh, Leitrim against Sligo on Carrick and, in Carrick and Shannon at half three on Sunday. Obviously not live anywhere, so don't click any uh, scammy links anywhere around uh, the internet. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't shown live there. But um, but Leitrim, obviously, Division 4 final last week, got a bit of a thumping off Leach and Grow Park. I don't know, will that affect their confidence going into this game? The game is in Carrick and Shannon, which should be a big bonus for them to go on and win the game. But Sligo were very, very good in Division 3. Quietly very good, may I add, as well. They beat Westmead. They were safe for a long way in uh, Division 3 as well. They finished four in the league. You would imagine Sligo will have too much. Yeah, like it's 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 definitely an interesting game, and obviously Leitrim, unfortunately, you got it got a bit of a lesson against Leash there last weekend in the Division Four final, and obviously the heads might be down, but obviously Leash had a, sorry Leitrim had a great win against the Mayo lads there during the week in the Under Twenty Championships. So big shout out to the Under Twenties, but um, I think this will be a tight game. Um, obviously Mickey Graham and Andy Moore, and they know all about Sligo. I think um. Uh, Andy Moore would know a lot about Sligo, obviously playing a lot against them over the years, and Mickey Mickey will plan accordingly for them. So I think it'll, I think it'll be tighter than a lot of people think. I think Sligo, I think Sligo probably still will get the job done, and obviously they, they are um, still moving very well under McEntee. Um but I think Leitrim could be the surprise kind of package. Obviously, it's home advantage for them. Little you know, Carcassonne and a very kind of tough, tricky place to go to. Um, it's a funny one, like, you know, Mickey Graham, like, the way he can kind of get players up for games and kind of read into tactics and, you know, better man maybe to try to kind of up, up, upset, upset the result. But it could just be the very, very game. You could just be going about your business on Sunday and you look on Twitter and it could go to extra time or it could go to a draw. So, I don't know. It could be tighter than a lot of people think. The Sligo have that better quality players. You know, it is it is an absolute fortress there, down there for Leitrim, you know, Andy Moore and Mickey Graham, they'd be they'd love to kind of put one over Sligo, get a get a bit of a coup, but I think Sligo might just have that bit more quality. And obviously Leitrim minus the services of Keith Barron this year. Keith's a huge loss at Leitrim uh, set up. My God, he, he had an incredible there, year there last year. And obviously uh, Nevin O'Donnell in the between the six uh, former Cavan player. Um he he, he done uh, quite well the croaker there last weekend, but they'll need him, they'll need all of him this weekend. But um I think Sligo, I think Sligo might just pip it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see actually. Like Sligo do have good players of their own. Sean Carabine, Niall Murphy, um, Alan McLaughlin has done well in the last few games. I have heard as well. Will will other players start the team? Will Pat Spillane start? Well, you obviously will. He's a very good uh, footballer as well. Like Leach from the last time these sides met in the championship actually in Carrick and Shannon, I think this game went to extra time in the Talton Cup and went all the way to penalties. So you would expect Leitrim to put up a fight here, but then again, like Sligo has so much quality. There's no doubt about it. Like in Division 3, they they, uh, they only lost to Clare because they were down to 30 men, I think, in the league. They lost to Down. They did beat Westmead, which was a huge win for them, huge confidence booster. So looking at them results, it's hard to see Leitrim win the game despite them having a very good campaign in Division 4. Like Sligo deserve, all the, deserve their credit and fairness. Ah, yeah, they do. Like, and obviously, as you say, like, like Pat's plan, like, what a remarkable footballer. And obviously, the the work that uh, Tony McIntyre. 
Tony McEntee is doing it's like like has to be applauded and you know Tony McEntee we do, we know about the I suppose the coaching and you know him as a player he, he could really he could go elsewhere he could he he, he could um he could get a nice kind of co- coaching week gig with some other county team go in his back or team but he, he took it on he's took the Sligo job and obviously him as manager and obviously like there sometimes the resources and you know some bit like, the, the lower down kind of vision teams can get at times so he took the job on fair play to him but look I think he will get the job done on Sunday but then again Matthew you know it's when you're coming up against the likes of your Mayo's and Galway's and Roscommon it's, it's it's just unfortunately where uh, where Roscommon's uh, road ends unfortunately and we've seen so many kind of tankings over the years it's like who have been on the receiving end of so probably goes into this kind of maybe unfairness to a degree that's in these kind of provincial champions, <coughs> championships but yeah I think as you say it's like with the quality of players to have holding their own in division three that I think unfortunately from the lead term end of things that I think Sligo will just have a bit too much for them they should do, yeah. And before we move on to the other provincial games in general, look, I wanted to ask you about Sligo because, like, a lot of people in predictions videos, that's been all say championship things as well, just getting ready for the season and all that. A lot of people actually predicted the Talton Cup winners would be Sligo. What do you think of that? Do you think Sligo could win the Talton Cup? Obviously, they will play Galway if they beat Leitrim in the kind of quarterfinal, but yeah, you'd imagine they'd lose that. But would you would you think they are favourites enough for the Talton Cup, considering like they made a good account of themselves in the Sam Maguire last year, and they reached the semi final when they were in it the previous year before that? So, mm. if there's every chance they could go on and win it, there is every chance. But it, 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 it Downs Talton this year, I think, aren't they? It, it, it results dependent in Ulster, isn't yeah. it? I think. Yeah, As I think. Stands, Down... yeah, I don't... Yeah, like I think Down probably would be favourites going into the Talton, but look, no reason why Sligo couldn't get, um, you know, get to the final and win it because I remember Calvin did play them in twenty twenty two and Croker that day, and like they really did give us like a, like a good run for the money. And obviously Sligo, like Calvin went to Sligo a couple of times. I remember going up to Mark Fitz Park a few times, and God, it's a very tight venue. It's it's a tough tough place to go. So I would not be surprised. Um, and again, it would be great to see if the wearer, you know, um. If the were to go on and try win the Talton or even get to the final, because we do talk about the provincials and you know realistically, Matthew after Sunday, Sligo's business in the country championship is probably done because you know they're not going to be beating Mayo, they're not going to be beating. Uh, well, they might put it up to as common, but they're not going to be beating Galway either. So it would be absolutely fantastic to see. There's no reason why it can't happen, but I think if Down are still in the Talton, I think there's a few other teams going to come through with. I think it could be Kildare. it could be it could be there Kildare as well and obviously Kildare have had a nightmare season thus far be very interesting can you know can Kildare get their house in order for the Talt and so on and so forth but it'd be great to see because after Sunday match you realistically still have nothing to play for in the county championship yeah exactly so and uh, going to a comment here for Denise will Leach be in the Talt and, and they will be they will be there's will no be, doubt yeah. about that uh, we'll bring up the Leinster draw in a sec but it's it's probably more more than the, more than likely they'll be in the Talton Cup. But we'll move on to the Munster Championship now, and I'll bring up the draw bracket here. And uh, before we get into the games here, this is a lot of controversy, and we discussed down with the Talton Cup there. The reason down are in the Talton Cup as it stands is because of the right hand side of the Munster draw there. So you have Clare, who will play the winner of Tipperary Waterford this week. Tipperary were tortious in the Alliance League ranking, Waterford 32nd, Clare in 80 or 19th place. But the winners from that side of the draw will be in the Sam Maguire Cup because they reached the provincial final. Obviously, Cork, Kerry, Limerick on the other side, you'd imagine Kerry will get past all those. But look at that draw there, John, um, for the right hand side in particular. Do you think the championship is kind of lopsided because of that? Because, look, it, considering Down B Clare by 11 points in the Allianz League in that point, in that round seven game, is that unfair on Down that they're in the Talented Cup and Clare will most likely be in the Samba Gore because of a monster draw? It's funny, Matthew, when you're saying that, it just took like an inhale of bread. I could just feel my like, blood pressure rising with, I suppose, the the the, 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 the unfair nature that's in the GA and obviously the league being our best competition. And uh, like, like how, how, how long more are we going to go with this absolute just madness of just, I suppose, unfairness and teams being in the wrong competitions? And now obviously the Talton really is trying to kind of stamp all that out. Like, but it's just, it's, 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 it's unfair. It's, unf- it's, it's just, it is flawed at this stage. And like, how many years have we really been kind of, you know, harping on about this and going on about this? And it just, it, it is, it is, it is unfair in a lot of counties. And obviously we'll be touching on to the Munster games now in a couple of minutes, but. 
like it just the likes of Clare and the likes of you know even Limerick Limerick had a nightmare of a league campaign and Tipperary like they're so so far away from like even talking about a Munster championship it's going to be Kerry's year again this year and obviously you can nearly I know obviously your own Cork are building the bridges and hopefully they can please God get into the Munster conversation once again very soon but yeah look it's just how many podcasts have me and you been on at this stage about probably the unfairness for a lot of counties and you know positioning not being in the right position and it's uh, yeah it's 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 nonsense really at this stage it is to be honest and i have a great time for clear football obviously but even the last last year's monster final against Kerry, they were absolutely outclassed in that game and yeah. even in the all ireland series they lost every single one of their games so yeah, look, it is unfair. There's no doubt about that. With Don performing and so minus, well, and minus and minus yeah. and minus the services of Pod, uh, Podge Col- or sorry, Colum Collins, and of course Owen Cleary as well. Like and Owen shot the yeah. lights out for Clare for a number of years, and he go and basically left the panel because you know Colum uh, um, Colum Collins finished up. So tough stations. It is like Keenan Sexton leaving as well. Keen O'D. I think there was eleven yeah. players on the yeah. panel. Like that's just crazy. Mad. Yeah. yeah. So Clare are probably going to have a tough year in the All Ireland. They will get past Watford to Tipperary. We will get onto those games later. We'll get onto the first Munster game. And speaking of kind of games that will will not provide any relevance this weekend, well, it should be an easy win for Cork. Let's be honest, it is on on Sunday at two p.m. I am going to this in Parky Keith, so there will be stats on the game on Sunday. But like Cork had a good end to the league after obviously losing the cabin. They beat Fermanagh, they beat Kildare, beat me, drew against Armagh and mm-hmm. they're going to the championship nice and steadily and fairness to John Cleary's side. Limerick, um, I counted nine games in this season and there will be a preview on the Limerick voice as well. I did say a preview uh, for the angle of Limerick trying to find some positives but at the same time, they've played nine games this year across McGrath Cup and the league. They've lost every single one of the games. Um, they finished brought bottom of Division 3. Yes, Danny Nevins come back into the team in the forward line. Josh Ryan is an interesting dynamic to go into goalkeeper for Limerick. But you'd imagine anything other than a Cork win here is so, so unexpected. Nah, Cork will get the job done on Sunday and I suppose it kind of does go to show and I suppose you're probably better placed to kind of go, go for this game but I'll, I'll give him a few thoughts on it anyway but you know Limerick from the Limerick end of things I think when Billy Lee did leave the Limerick post and obviously our fellow pundit David Byrne and the J. Mc podcast David, David probably would be up the same opinion probably when very much like Colin Collins with um, Clare when Billy Lee left Limerick I think that's probably when the when the when the, when the party was over to a degree, like there's been so many players leaving, the ha- they couldn't buy a result at the minute, they couldn't buy a win. It's it is so unfortunate, and it just goes goes to show when such a big voice, when such a big figure, when such such a big name, can it does leave a dressing room, it does go to show how much of an impact it can ha- can can have in a team. Um, so look, it, it's a tough station for Limerick. Obviously, Limerick Carlin's flying, and that's what they're up against really. And obviously, um, so much focus goes into the hurls, and this was the footballers. Unfortunately, it can be an afterthought at times, and that has to be so unfortunate for them. But uh, Cork will get the job done on Sunday. Um, I think you'll you'll be happy, man, on Sunday. It's, it's a good game to start with. It kind of stretches the legs for Cork. Finished up very well in the league. In fairness, gave us a serious game in Parky Cueve. My God, that game went down to the complete nutter wire. It was a fantastic game against you guys. And then you just finished the league really well. Um, it would I keep I've I think I've said this to you numerous times. It'd be great to see a good Cork team coming back. We always remember the Daniel Goulings, the Colin O'Neills, the the Fintan Ghouls, the Graham Canties, all these great players. So I think everyone would love to see Cork coming back. You're, the, the current players is there at the minute. Like I, I've always liked uh, Brian Brian Hurley. Obviously, Brian's been in around the panel since what 2013. Obviously, been played with injuries and um, the other full forward. But the name escapes me. Uh, for Connor Cor- Corbett for something. Yeah, Connor Corbett. Uh, yeah, Corbett. And you know, it's they've always had fantastic forward. So, and like, you, you'll be, you'll be always in deb- indebted to them. But look, I think you will, of course, get over the jo- get the job done on Sunday. Um, you could be looking at ten or fifteen points. I think you're, you, you'll have a nice day on the stats because I think uh, Cork will hopefully be racking up a big score. But from the Limerick end of things, it's just so unfortunate for them because the wheels fell off when Mister Billy Lee left. It is unfortunate, and obviously uh, Cork, I, I predict Cork will win the game. I think like consistency is a problem with the Cork team, but they should beat Limerick, no doubt about it. But it is unfortunate what has happened in Limerick since Billy Lee left. Like I think Ray Dempsey came in last year, quit mid-season. Mark Fitzgerald, he's obviously gone on to Clare now, who were very close in fairness and in promotion to Division Three. If you'd feel like if he st- if Limerick kept him on, then maybe things will be different this season. But they went with Jimmy Lee kind of the safe option 
But apparently, there are some very good performances in Limerick. Like against Antrim and Down, they lost by seven points and 16 points, respectively, in the first two games. They've lost by a point or two in the last few. So maybe there's a few positives to go into Limerick before the Talton Cup. But for this game in general, I think Cork should be easy enough winners. But um, you mentioned the importance of a good Cork team. I think Conor Coon had mentioned that during the week. Noel O'Leary mentioned it as well on Echo Live, uh, written by Barry O'Mahony. Check that out if you haven't already. Like, like they are absolutely right. Like, Kerry, it, it will not only help Gaelic football in general to have a good Cork team and it won't just help Cork it will help Kerry to a degree as well because they'll have a test in Munster each and every season if Cork rise up to the levels where we know this team can go up to so it is crucial to have a good Cork team back at the top table I'm not sure it is like, and I have I have fond memories of watching Cork. My God, I used to I as a young fella, I used to buy the DVDs, and I'd, I'd be watching Cork against Kerry. And I don't I don't know, did you ever get your hands on DVDs? But like it was like the likes of 08, 07, 06, 09, 2010, 11. Like oh my God, like I think me and you were probably nippers at this stage, well young lads at this stage, but piping hot days in Fitzgerald Stadium and Parky Cueve. Like you, Daniel Goulding go. I know, obviously, Daniel, a fellow punt of ours, probably blowing smoke up his backside there, but he was just incredible. You had the Gooch going up against, um, you know, the likes of Graham Canty, you had Paul Galvin and Graham Canty just tearing, just and Noel O'Leary. each other. No, O'Leary, like just unbelievable battles. So it would be fantastic to see a good, strong Cork team again because I think years ago, my God, they treated us some, uh, to some unbelievable battles. And even just for yourself and Dan, just to see a strong Cork again, Cork team again, because I know how big a followers you two men, of course, would be of the Cork team. So it'd be fantastic to see. We always talk about the population and obviously the fantastic stadium that uh, part that is Super Value Park Degree. We've always had to mention Super Value Park Degree, but no, it would be great to see because I think the Cork of Vol- Old, you know, obviously, the, if, I, I presume in the likes of obviously Dan and Graham Canty and Colin O'Neill and all the boys watching on at the minute saying, right, you know, let's try and get this show on the road again. And obviously, the likes of um, Mr. Walsh, is it, is it Liam Walsh that's uh, in there at the minute um, coaching Kevin the Cork Walsh. lads? So he's a serious, serious coach. We know about the, about the quality that that man brings. So Kevin Walsh, mm-hmm. sorry, yes. So look, it'd be great to see. It would be honestly great to see. You get the job done on Sunday and, you know, let's, let's see Cork push on from there. Yeah, exactly. Like Cork should win this game in general. And uh, yeah, we'd hope to see a good Cork team. But uh, speaking of the other side of the Munster draw, we'll go on to this though. Waterford against Tipperary, three o'clock on Sunday in Fracker Field, I think it is. Um, yeah, look, Waterford, this is probably the best opportunity that to have all season for a win, to be honest with you. Um, Tipperary had a poor enough league campaign, finished uh, third from bottom in Division 4. These are statistically the two worst teams on the island of Ireland other than Kilkenny in football. So they're playing each other in the Munster Championship this weekend. Um, I don't think much people would be actually tuning in or uh, going to this game because obviously these are two proud hurling counties rather than football. Like, it's a hard one to predict because Watford have a home advantage. Chipperary appear to have better players, but these sides drew with each other in the league. So it is a big opportunity for both of them because the winner of this plays Clare and the winner of that game goes into the All-Ireland Series. So it is a big game to a degree. Yeah, no, it is a big game, and I, I think from the Waterford and the things like what a feeling it would be to look on Twitter and Scorpio and see Waterford potentially getting the win here or even running Tipperary close. Because obviously, look, I've said it on numerous podcasts, said on my own podcast, your podcast, Aaron's podcast, it would be fantastic to see Waterford get a win. Because like I, I follow this guy, is a James Mansfield, and he goes to all the Waterford football games, and he's a real proud Waterford football supporter, and it can't be easy up there. And we obviously we know, and I always say the effort and time and the time management that the Waterford lads put in, like it, it's great seeing. You no, know, as you say, this could be a fantastic time to beat this Tipperary team. You know, Tipperary aren't neither team are so far away from winning a much championship, and it's so funny to say that after Tip winning in twenty twenty. But yeah, look, I think. Unfortunately, probably tip probably we will get the job done here. It, what a buzz, what a feeling it would be to look online and see Waterford potentially getting a result. But uh, yeah, I think Tipperary will get over the line here, maybe by about five or six points. Um, and unfortunately, just it's just Waterford's. Uh, I seen an article there during the week. I think Waterford, uh, who was it? Was it the Waterford manager Paul Mans? Is it Paul? Paul Shanky. Paul Shanky. He did say like it, it, the Waterford footballers hopefully will not end up like the Kenny lads, but. I don't know, it, it has to be a tough station up there. It is, to be honest. So I think Evie Fitzgerald, who was in the uh, post last season, actually said that it'd be tough for Waterford to even get a win in the next few years. So um, if they yeah. win this game, maybe the perception will change and we'll hope that Waterford win the game. Obviously, we hope Tipperary all the best as well, but 
like for Watford to get a win, it'd be just brilliant for buzzing for the whole yeah, championship yeah, yeah. in general, just to see a story yeah. like that. I know it would be fantastic, and as I said, you like I don't know whatever you're at in Stone Day, if you're if you're heading to a game or if you've the radio on, or I don't know if you're having a cup of coffee before a game, you're you're looking on Twitter and you're flicking through your phone, and the results are coming in that Waterford are getting the job done. My God, I think it would put a smile on everyone's face. But oh, Matt, you're fortunate. I just can't see it happening. Yeah, and uh, speaking of championships that uh, have a, a, an I- inevitable ending, we'll move on to the Leinster Championship, as Arnold yeah. described it as uh, the most entertaining <laughs> championship in, in the whole country. Could be, but, could uh, be the most. Just get rid of Dublin. Get rid of Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> ban the dubs, ban the dubs. But uh, <laughs> you heard it here on this podcast. But uh, look at the Leinster draw there. Uh, obviously, Dublin will goes without saying they'll probably make it to the Leinster final with ease um, and then you look at the other side of the draw what's interesting in this actually and we'll see in the next few weeks Kildare could save their season they could avoid the Tantan Cup if they beat Westmead and Loud Westmead or Wicklow and Loud or Cardo or Wexford so like Kildare could still save their season looking at that and um, we'll have to see how it transpires in the next few weeks considering me they're on the other side of the draw as well so it is a huge opportunity for Kildare we'll move on to the first game on Sunday um, chronologically we'll move on um, with times and things like that so the first one at half two is Wexford against Carlo in the preliminary round on Sunday at half two and the winners of this play loud in the quarter final who would fancy their chances to be fair uh, Wexford or Carlo well if Wexford had a decent league campaign in Division 4 obviously missing out due to that penalty decision against Leitrim Carlo um, the wheels kind of came off with this game in the league actually Wexford beat Carlo by 114 to 7 points I think it was in the league and Carlo just ended their promotion push then so the form book would would say that Wexford will be winning this game but Carlo wants revenge after the league uh, lost that they suffered at the hands of the Yellow Bellies yeah, yeah, it's and it's so funny. Obviously, as you say at the start of this, like talking with the Leinster Championship, and it, it's it's just such a crazy kind of mindset going into, I suppose, a competition where we know the winners are going to be, and that like Dublin have won the last, what are we talking since 2010? So 11, Four, 13, 13, 14, 10, 13, yeah. 13, 13 or 14 Leinster mm-hmm. Championship. So, ah, oh, look, it's just. You know, it's it, it's crazy. Like it, it, it's like talking. I, I, how could you come? What what would you compare the Leinster Championship and talk about these games when you know what's going? Who's going to be the winner? It's, it's the most messed up situation. I think you're going to ha- you're you're really going to have when you're following football. But yeah, this game, uh, this game on the weekend. Look at it, it's it's. I suppose it's 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 filling the fixture. It's it's a tick in the box for the the Leinster Council, the Leinster Championship. But I think Wexford Wexford are very good throughout the league. And like my God, I think I, I gave him a bit of praise on Twitter. Ben Brosnan at the time is Ben Brosnan. 175 games for Wexford like that is just incredible going um, he is just he's a podcast alone so probably the, the power of that man and obviously the, the longevity of him so fair play to Ben but I think um, I think Wexford and Carlo I think Wexford could upset the odds here I think they, they could be in for a win I think they're a very good kind of league campaign um, again like it's it, it's probably as you said the winners of this go, go on and play it out so you know, like is is it just kind of is it is it's a take a tick, tick box exercise? Carlo as well, they'll be they'll be mad to, I suppose, kind of get get the result as well. But no, I think Wexford Wexford, if you're put if you're doing a bit of a a bit of a bet this weekend, I go for Wexford. Yeah, exactly. I'll go for Wexford to win win the game as well. But this will probably be the toughest out of the three lanes for championship games to call this weekend. Uh, but having said that, I'm going to go for Wexford win there. On to the next one of these Longford against Meath. In uh, Glen Brothers Pierce Park at, on Sunday at 3 p.m., like the winners of this play Dublin, and we all know the inevitability there um, in a loss for either of these two sides. But in fairness, like if me make it out of this game, I think they'll have Dublin and Part Halton. So, like Part Halton will actually be bouncing. Now, from the town itself, yeah, will be bouncing be if the clubs come to yeah, town. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it it definitely will be great, and it, it it's a funny kind of one going into this like long uh, Longford and Mead, like you know, you know, like there's like whoever nearly wants to lose because obviously you're going to get bet in the next game regardless. But yeah, no, as you say, like obviously if Mead do get the job on Sunday, um, job done on Sunday, like it, that'll be geez, that'll be fantastic. Jeez, you nearly go that yourself, Mead in Dublin. Obviously, I know it's not the rival of years ago, but a pack part Halton is a is is a nice place to go to. But I think Mead will get the job done. Obviously, playing playing a higher division than Longford this year, Longford. Tough place to go. Um, at times, it's it, geez, it's a sticky, sticky venue down there. But I think Joe Sheridan, Joe Sheridan, obviously, get try our fellow opponent will try get down to this game, and he'll be he'll be happy man leaving. Mead, the game we played against in Brefty, uh, Kingsman Brefty, there 
a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I thought there were, I thought the likes of Shane Walsh, you know, could have been seen a lot better from him. I think Jordan Morris, I'm not sure in his fitness, uh, uh, Morris will be interested to see, to see play any part this weekend. Um, he's obviously playing his club football here in Calvin, but I was impressed by Mead against us. Um, the def- I thought they defended very well, they worked very hard, they snuffed out Paddy Lynch. Um, so I think I think the, I think they will get the get over the line on Sunday. But again, as you say, you know they're playing the potential if they do get the job done. It's 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 a shot to nothing the next day out. So look, oh match. I don't know. Again, I said a couple of minutes ago the problems in front of us and we don't want to fix it. But it's it's crazy stuff. Like look, me get the job done and then they're 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 out the next day against Dublin and Dublin obviously go on and beat them. So it's uh it's uh, it's it is insanity as Mister McCarty has said over the years. Yeah, exactly. So, and uh, of course, Kevin McCourty on your podcast, like he's well spoken of Ernest. So, uh, yeah, he'll definitely uh, speak about this uh, once me come up against Dublin, of course, or Leach and Offaly for that matter, the semi final. So, yeah, I'm going to go for Mead win and uh, hopefully Partal to be bouncing for that game because the championship definitely needs the Leinster championship in particular. The final game of the Leinster championship here is Westmead against Wicklow on in Westmead on Sun or on Port Leash, I think it is at half three. I'm not sure why it's on Port Leash, but there you go. Um like it's on at half three in this uh Westmead obviously won the division three title deservedly so last uh, week against Down. Wicklow relegated to the division four two sides going in opposite directions completely. You would expect Westmead to go on and win the game. But Wicklow with Westmead celebrating um well last week, can Wicklow um maybe catch them on the hop? Yeah, Westmead and Wicklow, like, it'll be it'll be interesting. No, I think Westmead, I think it's probably one of the more obvious results of the weekend. Westmead will get the job done. Obviously, Oshie McConville will be will be will be setting the stall out for this particular game. But I think Westmead, they've just too much quality for Wicklow. Obviously, gone up to Division Two now, and that's probably where they belong. Um, obviously, we we seen Luke Lachlan there last weekend. He had a great game, and obviously, um, geez, John Hesen coming off still coming off for Westmead. The, the, the longevity of that man is just is crazy, and obviously, Desi Dolan has said at the start of this podcast. Cast obviously no, no beer no no celebrations after the game unfortunately for the for the West Mead lads so it was unfortunate so the head was down and obviously Desi was saying that it's the biggest game of the year this weekend and rightly so but yeah West Mead will get the job done on Sunday um I think it it could be handsome it could be quite handsome as well you could be looking at ten to twelve points I'd imagine um I think they'll stretch their legs and yeah poor Wicklow will be out of the Leinster Championship on Sunday. Yeah, I'll have to go for a Westmead win as well and they'll play Kildare in the quarterfinal as the draw goes. So yeah, that's all the championships wrapped up in football. So thank you, John, for coming on to the podcast today and uh, best luck to Cavan against Monaghan this weekend. Matthew, thanks very much. You're a gentleman. Thank you. No bother, John. No bother. So um, after the football now, we will move on to the Allianz Hurling League final. So this is a big game between Kilkenny and Clare to decide who will win the Allianz Hurley League title for Division 1. It's hard to believe that the Allianz League is still at the same time as the Football Championship, but there you go. And as mentioned before, and it is clear against Kilkenny in Semple Stadium on, on Saturday evening at 7.15 on TG Carr. So, um, yeah, it should be an interesting game. This Clare haven't won the league since 2016. Kilkenny haven't won it since 2021, according to Wikipedia. So, like, both sides are really hungry for a league title, considering the beast that is Limerick in the All-Ireland Series. So Kilkenny beat Limerick in the semi-final. Really well done to them. Unbelievable achievement to beat Limerick. And Clare beat Tipperary quite comfortably in the semi-final as well. And Denise says here, Clare win all over. We'll have to see how it plays out. But we will look at the stats and scores for both of these sides right here, right now. So we'll start off with Clare and we'll look at their scores in route to the Allianz Hurling League final. So on the screen here. So as you can see on the screen, eight McCarthy's their top scorer with 26 points in the Allianz League. Mark Rogers with 19. David Stewart has done brilliant around the middle of the bottom goal at 16 points. You have David Reedy with 10 points as well. And this is without the services of Shane O'Donnell and Tony Kelly. And mentioning Shane O'Donnell and David McInerney to that degree as well. Apparently they're the 26 for Clare for this game. So there's a sign that they are coming back forward. So well done to Clare for getting the back into the team. And on to their, on to their run to the final. Uh, they beat Cork, beat Watford, Drew against Wexford, obviously beat Kilkenny in the previous encounter in Cusick Park and Ennis by 19 points to 16, beat Offaly and beat Tipperary. So they've won every game except the Wexford one, which was a draw. Probably the most worrying aspect for Clare, though, is they've only scored two goals in their 
the run to the final. Only the Shane and Murray goal against Cork and the Dave Fitzgerald st- scorcher of a goal against Tipperary. They've scored a total of two goals and 127 points. That's 22 points per game. And they've conceded seven goals and 96 points, 117 per game. And look, that is a concern for Clare. I know they're without Tony Kelly and Shane O'Donnell for this game, but it is a concern that they, they go into this game um, scoring that little amount of goals but at the same time it is a national trophy on the board they've won every game except the Wexford game coming into this one so you would expect Clare to turn up for this final especially with Limerick on the horizon in the championship we look at Kilkenny scores now before we get into a match day prediction so TJ Reid has scored a total of one goal and 25 points and bear in mind the Ballyhill Shamrocks man has come in for the last few games for Kilkenny in the league. Billy Drennan scored a total of two goals and 20 points, just behind his own Cody with two goals and 19. You have Adrian Mullen at 16 points. And this is the worry for Kilkenny because after Adrian Mullen, there seems to be very low scores. I know John Donnelly has scored nine points, but then you have Luke Hogan with a goal and two points. Like, there's been only five players on the Kilkenny team that have scored over five points, which is kind of a worry for Derek Ling's side, there's no doubt about that. And we look at their run to the final here. They drew against Wexford very much like Clare, uh, two goals to, and 16 points apiece. They beat Cork in Super Value Park, he keep by a pint. Beat Offaly, lost to Clare, beat Watford, and obviously beat Limerick in that brilliant game in Super Value Park, he keep the last day out. They've scored a total of six goals and 114 points. That's 119 per game. And they've conceded seven goals and 95 points, 116 per game. So interesting that both sides have conceded seven goals en route to the Allianz Hurling League final. So it should be a very interesting encounter that way. In terms of a match day prediction, I'm going to go... I'm going to go for Clare. I've said it from the start of the league that they need a national trophy on the board and I think they're going to win the National Hurling League this year for the first time since 2016. So Brian Lohan's team might get a trophy on the board before the Munster Championship kicks off against Limerick on on April 21st. So yeah, I'm going to go for Clare win here on the podcast. So that's the Hurling Leagues done. Obviously all the Hurling Leagues were last weekend so no need to discuss other ones. So we'll move on to the LGFA this weekend. Obviously, there's no Kabogi this week, so it's strictly on LGFA. And there is the league finals this week, along with Galway and Watford, which we'll get on to a bit, uh, rescheduled essential relegation playoff there. So we'll move on to the first of the LGFA finals, moving from Division 1 down downwards. We move on to Armagh against Kerry on Sunday at 3 p.m. in Crow Park. So it should be a great day out for both of these sides. Obviously, Armagh, as we'll see from their journey to the final, over the last few weeks, they have won every game, I think, except the Dublin game where they conceded seven goals with playing with essentially a second team, whereas Kerry have been brilliant throughout in the league and obviously reached the All-Ireland final last term. We'll move on to our mass scores, first of all, to get a greater picture into this LGFA final. So if you, as you can see on the screen there, Amy Mackin, six goals and 21 points. That is an incredible tally in seven games. Kelly Mallon scored a total of two goals and 17. Aoife McCoy there with two goals and six. Carolyn O'Hanlon, who's playing for yet another season around the middle of the park for our mass with a goal and four points and then you have players like Laura McConville, Emily Drusey, Eve Lavery, Neve Coleman, some excellent players on the Armagh team. We'll move on to their journey to the final here. So they beat Ward for two goals and eight points to two goals and three, beat Cork as well in Parky Rin, beat Galway by eight points to six, Trash Mead to be fair by two goals and 12 points to eight points there and against Kerry in the previous encounter between the two sides Armagh won that three goals and 14 points to 113 they beat Mayo by a point and obviously that game against Dublin where they played a second team losing seven goals and 10 points to 1-4 they've scored a total of 11 goals and 63 points and 63 points excuse me with 2-8 on average per game, they've conceded 13 goals and 54 points, but albeit seven of those goals were against Dublin. If you discount the Dublin game, they conceded six goals overall. So not too bad in um, in six goals in seven games. It's about a goal a game there, but obviously that average has been put up to two because of the amount of goals they conceded against the Dubs. We'll move on to Kerry scores here, and obviously Louise Niverhertig is the top scorer for the Kerry ladies footballers with one goal and 19 points. That's 1-9 from play. Emma Deneen has been brilliant in this league campaign, scoring a total of 2-12. Neil Carmody with 16 points. Hannah O'Donoghue has been brilliant as well for Kerry with two goals and 10 points. And then you've other players like Katie Brosden, Jaden Lucy, Daniel O'Leary, 
Anna Galvin, Naomi Crohor, Lorraine Scanlon, also excelling for the Kerry team. We'll move on to their journey to the final and look at their games here. They beat Dublin on the first day out by 1-8 to 6 points in Parnell Park. They did beat Watford by 2 goals and 11 points to 2 goals and 5 points. Trashed Cork in Aston Stack Park in Tralee, 214 to 7 points. Beat, uh, they drew against Mayo, excuse me, by 8, point, eight points apiece. Lost Armagh, obviously. Beat me by 115 to 5 points. And then they beat Galway, 211 to 12 points. They've scored a total of 9 goals and 80 points in Division 1, an average of 112 per game, and they've conceded an average of 17 after conceding a total of 5 goals and 57 points. Moving on to the actual prediction for this game, it's a tight one to call, it really is. Armagh have been probably the best team in the league up until this point. I'm disregarding the Dublin game now because they play the second team. You can't read too much into that. However, I'm going to go for a Kerry win. They've won the league last year. They're experienced at this level in Crow Park. There is still question marks about Armagh in big games in Crow Park. There's no question mark about their talents. Ethan McCoy, Amy Macken, and other players around the team as well, like Cardinal O'Hanlon. There is no question, Kelly Mallon. There's no question that Armagh do have talent, but Kerry have experience, and there's no doubt about that. Reaching the All-Ireland final last year, being so, so close to the All-Ireland from the Brendan Martin Cup. So I am going to go for Kerry win on this podcast here. We'll move on to the other three LGFA finals before we move on to the essential relegation playoff between Galway and Watford. We'll move on first to the Division 2 final in Grove Park, Kildare against Tyrone on Sunday at 1pm. And both of these sides wrapped up promotion um, on, match day, on match day five, um, more or less, because on match day six they played each other and by then, Promotion was sealed, so these two dominated Division 2. There's no doubt about that. We'll look at their scores here um, on this podcast. So we'll look at Kildare's scores first of all. You could see there, Roshi Byrne, brilliant campaign from her. Three goals and 28 points, 13 from freeze there. Nasa Dooley with two goals and 10 points. Ellen Dowling, two goals and nine. And Dini players like Grace Clifford, who's been brilliant. Lara Curran, Aoife Rattigan, Trina Duggan, Ruth Sargent, Elio Two have been brilliant for Kildare in this campaign. We look at their journey to the final here. Uh, they beat Monaghan, beat Donegal, beat Cavan, quite comprehensively there, may I add. Beat Tipperary, beat Leash, drew against Tyrone in the last encounter and beat Westmead. So they won all their games except the Tyrone game, which probably um, epitomised their dominance in Division 2 of the Little National League. They scored a total of 2-8 per game. Uh, they scored a to- grand total of two- 12 goals and 63 points, which is an incredible tally for Kildare. And they're on a winning run as well, obviously, after winning the Intermediate All-Ireland Championship last year. And they will be in the Leinster Championship alongside the likes of Leash, Mead and Dublin in the Championship this season. They've conceded an average of 1-5 per game. We'll move on to Tyrone scores. Um, going on to this point, I think that's their journey to the final, so apologies. Um, this is their scores here. So Maria Maria Canavan has scored a total of five goals and twenty one points. That's two nine from place balls. So that's a total of three goals and twelve points from play. Chloe McCaffrey's been brilliant in this campaign as well with a total of three goals and ten. Emma Conroy one goal and eleven. Zoe Lochran with two goals and four. Sasha Byrne with two goals and two points. Avi McHugh with one goal and four points. Eva Horisk with one goal and three. And then you have Avi Davley. Evie Daly, excuse me, and Caitlin Campbell in the in the defence has done really well for Tyrone in this campaign as well. We'll move on to their journey to the final, and they haven't been as dominant as Kildare have, but in fairness, they have been very dominant um, to an extent other than many teams in Division um, 2 in the league. They beat Westmead by two goals and nine points to one goal and seven. They beat Tipperary by a point, beat Monaghan, drew against Leash, beat Donegal, drew against Kildare, and they beat Cavan. So they won five games out of a possible seven, which is an incredible record for Tyrone. Obviously, they'll be an intermediate All-Ireland Championship this term. They've scored a total, or an average of 2-9 per game and could see an average of 1-9. So moving on to the prediction for this game, I'm going to go Kildare. I think they've looked impressive since the intermediate All-Ireland Championship last year. To, to be to be truthful to you, Tyrone, they didn't really stand their claim on the All Ireland Intermediate Championship last season. So I'm going to go for a Kildare win in that game. So um, the winning run will continue for the Lily Whites. On to the D- Division 3 final. It is Ross Common against Clare on a 4 pm on Saturday, live on the TG Car YouTube channel, the Sport TG Car YouTube channel. That's the Division 3 
final. Um, yeah, an interesting game between these two because obviously these two, like Kildare and Tyrone, have been dominant from the very start in Division 3 and deserve promotion to Division 2. So we'll move on to Roscommon scores, first of all, if I can get it up on the screen. So top of the list there is Laura Fleming with two goals and 19 points. Ashing Hanley with two goals and 16. You've Ashley Feely and Lord Shanahan doing really well for Roscommon as well in the league campaign. And then you look at their journey to the final. They beat down quite comprehensively, beat loud, drew against Clare in the in the comprehend um, com the previous fixture between the two sides. Uh, they beat Sligo, Wexford, Offaly, and Antrim as well. So they won six games out of a possible seven, scoring an average of one eleven per game and conceding an average of nine points. We'll move on to Clare and their scores in the, the Division 3 campaign. Fidelma Marinan, what a tally that is. Nine goals and 18 points. 1-4 from play spots. So that means eight goals and 14 points from play. That is incredible. And we know this, this player was very, very good from the league camp, from the All-Ireland Championship Intermediate campaign last season. But that is an incredible tally. Um, Teresa Collins with four goals and three points has been very good as well. Eilish Considine coming back from the AFLW has scored a total of two goals and six points on her, on her mighty return. Chloe Malone has been brilliant as well with 1-8, as is Ashley Reedy from midfield for the Banner County. Moving on to their journey to the final, they beat Wexford, beat Sligo, drew against Roscommon, as I mentioned before, beat Offaly, beat Loud, beat Antrim by 10 goals and 7 points to 7 points. That's a ridiculous st score. And in that particular game, Fidelma Marinan scored a total of 4 goals and 4 points, which it, it beggars belief more than anything. And they did lose to down in the last game. So they won a total of 5 games out of a possible 7. And they lost one and drew one. But the game they did lost, they did lose against Down. The job was already done. They scored an average of three goals and seven points per game, conceding an average of one six. Moving on to the official prediction, I'm gonna go for a Ross Common win here. They finished top of the league. They've won six games out of seven, which is not an easy thing to do. So I'm gonna go for a Ross Common win there. And watch out for Ashley Hanley, who's a very good player, very good young player, Laura Fleming as well, and Ash Ashley Feely for the um for the Rossi. So I'm gonna go for a Ross Common win there. And um, moving on to the last uh, L LGFA league final, it is Carlo against Limerick on a 2 p.m. on the TG Car YouTube channel. And before we get into the scores, just a, a shameless plug about the Limerick Voice as well. I did do a preview on this game for the Limerick Voice. Tailored because of Limerick obviously reaching this LGFA final. Check that out if you haven't already. He's, he's on the, the, the brilliant Limerick Voice website at the moment. So check that out if you haven't already. So we will move on to scores and stats now. So we'll move on to Carlos scores first to preview this final. Cleone Nishi, Rachel Sawyer and Sarah Doyle have been by far Carlos' most threatening players in this campaign. Cleone Nishi in particular, four goals and 26 points. Rachel Sawyer has not a bad amount either with uh, three goals and 19 points. Sarah Doyle with two goals and 12. Obviously, Maeve O'Neill with two goals and two, including a last gasp winning goal in the semi-final against Fermanagh. And we'll mention that in the journey to the final in a sec. But that needs to be taken into account as well. Speaking of the journey to the final, this is it for Carlo. They beat Derry, drew against Fermanagh on the first day out. Drew against Longford, beat Kilkenny by three goals and 13 points to no score. So that was a good win there. Beat Wicklow, lost to Leitrim, lost against Limerick. So that was the last meeting between the two sides. And obviously beat Fermanagh thanks to that Maeve O'Neill last minute goal. And uh, they've averaged a score of 2 9 per game and have averaged a concession rate of 1 9 per game. Moving on to the opposition to Carlo and the daddies. Limerick, of course. Iris Kennelly is their top score. Iris Kennelly, sorry, is their top scorer with two goals and sixteen points, with two thirteen from play. And um, Deborah Murphy with 10, 2 10. Quiva McGrath eleven points. Roisin Ambrose from midfield has been a sensational for him as well. Obviously nominated for Junior Player of the Year last year as well. So Limerick do have a, a, a very good group of players there at their disposal. Look at their journey to the final. They drew against Wicklow on the first day out, beat Derry, beat Kilkenny, drew against Longford, lost the lead from him for Manon, but then saved their promotion bid by beating Carlo in that game, 111 to 19. So that would be at the back of Carlo's minds. No doubt about that. And obviously, they did beat Leitrim by 210 to 111, thanks to an Iris Kennelly 67th minute winner. 
that was an incredible game. Both semi-finals actually were decided by last-minute goals, which is absolutely incredible in its own right. Limerick have scored a total of one goal and eight points per game and have conceded one seven. So that's an impressive record to an extent as well. I know I've been reported for the Limerick voice and stuff like that. And obviously from a personal standpoint, I'd be hoping Limerick will win the game. However, I think Carlo will just have enough. Cleone, she's in its outstanding form. Rachel Sawyer is as well. So is Sarah Doyle. And I think that would be enough for Carlo to get over the line. And uh, obviously that is at the end of the preview because there is one more game to discuss. This is the rescheduled Division 1 game between Galway and Watford on Sunday at 2pm in Duggan Park in Ballinasloe. Look, this is a relegation um, four-pointer if there, or six-pointer because there's three points in um, for an LGFA win. Look, I think this is a big game for both sides. And it, just for context, Watford have to win this game to stay up. A draw would be enough for Galway to stay up. Cork are already relegated down to Division 2, but who will join them? This is a tough one to call. Obviously, Watford have had you know great escapes in the past. Galway have some very good players, albeit have lost some experienced campaigners such as Roisin Leonard and Maria Choiga. They do have brilliant players, um, no doubt about that, Galway. The likes of um, Aoife O'Rourke, if she plays in this game, like the Kilcurren Clown Burgers, like Hannah Noon, Lindsay Noon, Ava Noon, will they play in this game? And uh, Nicola Wars, like Louise Ward, there are some very good players in the Galway team. And on paper, Galway look like the most likely outcome to go on and win this game. But Waterford have been in this situation before. And Lauren McGregor is a good player there. Kelly Ann Hogan. There are some excellent players in this Watford team. Maria O'Brien, obviously, she was part of the Ashburn Cup winning team for you. When she plays football as well, very good footballer. She scored a total of three goals and two points in Division 1. So definitely one to watch from play and a goal getter in this team. This is such a tough one to call because there's so much on the line in this. There's Division 1 football on the line. I'm going to squeak it. I'm going to go for a shock victory here. I'm going to go for Watford to go out and win this game. Look, Galway have the better players. I do think that. And I do think the Kilcurr and Clan Burgers will provide a great impetus for the Galway team. But I think Watford have been on the edge so many times and they've dragged themselves out of it. So I'm going to go for a Watford win. And they will survive, according to my prediction, in Division 1. And Galway will go down with Cork to Division 2. So... After uh, about one hour and 25 minutes, that is the preview. Thanks to John McMahon for coming on for the football preview and hope you enjoyed the hurling and the LGFA preview as well. Give the video a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, follow Gaelic Statsman on Instagram, all, all that as well, and TikTok. And follow John's channel, of course, the JMAC podcast on Twitter and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Some very good content there. Obviously, I'm a pundit on that same um, on that channel as well. So check that out if you haven't already. And um, until the next video, guys, I'll see you then and enjoy the championship games this weekend.